is a colleague of mine based in Melbourne. Um, Andrew has a previous background in journalism and radio. Um, he's been working with us for the better part of 10 years, um, married with some two, I should know this, two children, right? Three. Three, three, kids, three children. Three. Yep. And um, as he just said, shared with me before, they've had the joys of uh, sharing COVID through the household. I think there's one more at the moment. Um, Andrew has a particular focus with us on through the pressures of living in the workplace. And he actually wrote a book uh, called Under Pressure. And a lot of these thoughts do come back to this question of, um, I guess, identity. And no doubt that will come up in uh, this morning's uh, presentation, I'm assuming. Uh, but we'll find out in a sec. So, uh, Andrew, thank you for being willing to share with us this morning. And uh, I'll hand over to you. Wonderful. Well, it's wonderful to, to join you all. Um, and I think as Peter might have shared in uh, earlier emails, asked me to come and speak about this idea of um, work and our, and our identity, or as I like to call it, you know, this idea of I, I am what I do. And I thought I'd just begin by sharing a little bit of my own story. Peter's um, helpfully shared a little bit of it just there for you. But um, work has always been something that I have uh, loved, do love. Um, I've always, from a very young age, felt just a real deep sense of satisfaction and accomplishment in, in getting things done. Um, you, you perhaps know something of that as well, too. Um, and I, I think that's, that's probably a, a healthy thing. Um, but of course, um, it, can, it can, if it takes on a, a life of its own, then uh, all sorts of issues and problems can, can arise. Um, but I, I remember very early on in my, my work life, um, as Peter said, my background was um, journalism, particularly in radio. And like many industries, uh, we would have uh, an annual uh, awards night where the, the best in the industry in a variety of different um, uh, fields would be, be recognised. And uh, right from my first year out working full time, I would, I'd submit an entry every year to this, uh, this annual uh, radio awards night. Um, in the hope that I'd be be recognised as you know the best new young journalist or the best uh, the best in you know provincial areas or whatever the category might be, and um, time and time again uh, I would uh, I'd, I'd not get recognised and um, I I still remember now the real deep sense of um, pain um, and that's not to not to exaggerate but the deep sense of pain that I would feel with with not having been recognised by my peers, that this, this, um, it was more than just disappointment at, at not, uh, at not uh, being recognised, but a real uh, something that cut really quite deeply to my sense of my sense of self, and um, the way that I, I viewed myself, and the and the value that I felt that I had both in my own eyes, but also in the eyes of of others, given that I wasn't being recognised as the best um, in, in the industry. And it would be something that would really, uh, as I say, cut quite deeply and, and um, cause me a great degree of, of, of pain and um, um, frustration and anger perhaps even as well. And as I've, as I've grown older, I've come to realize that that was just one little symptom and there are many others I'll touch on in a moment of, of the way in which I had a very unhealthy connection between my sense of self, my identity, the, the value and the worth that I believed I had in my own eyes or the eyes of others, and my accomplishments, my, my work, what I did achieve or what I didn't achieve. Uh, as I say, there was this, this idea of I, I am what I do and, and my value and my worth and my dignity caught up with what I do or don't do. Now, I don't think I am unique uh, in, in this kind of attaching our identity to um, to our work. In fact, I think it's a very common feature um, in particularly Western individualistic um, cultures such as ours. I remember when the Australian basketballer Lauren Jackson retired, um, her career was cut short by, by injury. Um, and at her press conference, she said these words, she said, you know, to say goodbye to my love, what was my life, my identity, um, this, this hurts because Jackson, who was she if she wasn't a basketball player, was, was effectively what she was saying. And I think many of us um, know something of that, and particularly we can often feel it 
around times of transition and also particularly around times of retirement. Um, a friend of mine, um, Graham Hooper, uh, talks about going to a party one time and uh, he tells me the story of meeting this, meeting this guy who had recently retired. And the guy introduced himself to Graham and said, hi, my name is Bill, I used to be somebody. And um, Graham, Graham saying, you know, it was said with a, a sense of jest and humour, but, but there was obviously an element of truth to it as well now that who was Bill now that he had retired? Um, but you see this just daily, this, this sense of I am what I do in just our conversations with people. Um, you, you think about some of the first questions we ask people when we meet them. So often it is, what do you do? And you notice some of the language that people often use to answer that question. They don't say, I work as a lawyer or I work as a teacher, but I am a lawyer or I am a teacher. It's, a, it's a, an identity statement, a statement about the self. This is who I am. And um, there's, a, there's a French philosopher by the name of Luc Ferry who um, has written quite extensively about this and very helpfully. And, and what he says is this is, a, this is really a, a feature of what I mentioned a moment ago, cultures like ours that, are, that, that have, a, have a, a Western individualism. And Ferry just defines individualism as this sense of, uh, I am an end in myself. Who I am, my identity begins and ends with me. I, I shape myself. Um, it's not, my identity is, is far less um, determined by the people around me or the family that I'm a part of, as it, as it may be in other cultures or in other periods in history. But in Western, modern Western individualism, I shape myself. And Ferry goes on to explain that the implications of that is that so often, well, if I shape myself, then it is very much shaped, my identity is shaped by what I do, of course. And he says, well, where's one of the key arenas where we do? Well, of course, it's our daily work. And he goes on to describe the, the monumental significance that a person's work must take on if they are living and breathing this, this Western individualism, because work becomes the key arena by which, in which we really shape ourselves. We define ourselves. We, we demonstrate our, our value, our worth, our dignity. Um, and so I think you, you're getting the idea, hopefully, of, of this being really a dominant feature in our culture. But as I mentioned both uh, uh, earlier on, and also the example of the guy who'd retired, that when we attach our value and our identity um, to our work, we set ourselves up for, I think, um, a fair degree of pain and, and sadness and, and disappointment, because I think all of us know that work inevitably disappoints and fails and, 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 and lets us down. And we, we don't necessarily reach the heights that we might have, have hoped to have, have reached. And when that occurs, not if, but when it inevitably occurs, it can be quite so crushing to our sense of self and our sense of worth if we've tied all of our value and dignity up with what we, what we do. Um, at its most tragic level, there's a, there is a very strong statistical connection in countries like Australia today between um, suicide and disappointment with work, particularly amongst men, but not exclusively. But, but, but that, that, is a, that is something which is a, a, a tragic uh, outworking of this, which is very prevalent in, um, prevalent in uh, countries like ours today. Um, uh, but you can see it in other ways as well, too. I, re I recognised it in terms of um, when my work would be criticised. Very early on in my career, I'd be very defensive and um, about any criticism that I might have received of my work. Why is that? Well, it's because it's not simply my work being criticised, but it's my identity, because my identity and my, my, my work are so tightly bound. And so the degree to which criticism would impact me and make me angry or um, just leave me completely discouraged, I think was also a, a litmus test of the degree to which I was tying my sense of self and value and worth to what I, what I accomplished. Um, could give many more examples of the, the way this works itself out, particularly negatively um, 
in our in our life. But you, you get the idea. And I I often um, like to describe it almost as a sense of um, of slavery. It's a it's a real burden. Um, this 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 terrible slave master of having to prove myself constantly um, through my achievements and accomplishments because this this sense of self is so fickle. Um, we might rise to the tops, but we but uh, there's no guarantee that we'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> Um, we might have the applause of our colleagues one day, but there is no guarantee that we'll have their applause and their recognition and their respect the next. Uh, this, this sense of self is just so, so fickle and hence we have to keep on, keep on proving ourselves, keep on proving ourselves, keep on going and striving to try and maintain, maintain this. And so really what's the, what's the solution to this? And this is where my particular my Christian faith has um, really helped me with, with this. And that if, if our identity is bound up with, well, what I achieve and accomplish, then as I say, that, that, that can be so fickle and fleeting. Um, and so we really need a sense of identity and a sense of self that is, comes from outside of us. And that is something that is, that is given to us that uh, is not necessarily earned, but is, is, is given to us and cannot be taken away from us. And that is something that I have found in the Christian faith as a key aspect of it. Um, the Christian faith makes the very clear point that our identity is not caught up and bound with, with our work what we might achieve or accomplish or fail to achieve or accomplish. But uh, the Christian faith declares that your identity is something which is given to you um, by, by God. And in particular, uh, the Christian faith teaches that the God of the Bible um, sees, sees the person uh, who is trusting in him uh, basically as he sees his son. Uh, we have this, this, this new identity where the person of Jesus is, uh, becomes our identity and it is who he is that God, God sees when he looks upon us, not our successes or failures. Uh, there's, a, there's a wonderful passage um, in, that's recorded in a number of um, the biographies of Jesus where uh, it records his baptism and at his baptism, Jesus comes up out of the water and there's this voice from heaven and it's God the Father. And what does he say of his son? Um, he says, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Um, I think many of us have, perhaps have had difficult or not ideal, certainly not perfect relationships with our father, but what extraordinary words for a father to say to his son, you know, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. And the, um, and the, the Christian faith teaches that what God the father says of God the son, he says of those who are who are trusting in him namely that the identity of the christian person is this is my son this is my daughter whom i love with them i am well pleased and it is not because of our achievements or accomplishments or our works but it's because of the person of who jesus is and the life and the death that he that he lives and the death that he died and so that means that we can have this is what i have found we have a, a fixed identity that cannot be taken away from us and an identity that could not be any greater, namely the, the, the God of the universe, the creator, as I believe, saying of us, this is my son, this is my daughter whom I love, with them I am well pleased. And so I might not have the applause of my colleagues, but I've got this recognition of my creator, which doesn't rise or fall on my, on my work. Um, but it is, a, it is a fixed external identity which is given to me. And what I have found with that is a, a great sense of freedom. I've found this real movement from slavery to, to freedom um, uh, in, 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 various, in, in various different, uh, different ways. Um, in that no longer is my daily work the, the source, if you like, of where I'm trying to find and create my identity. But my work then becomes the expression of this new identity that I have, um, of knowing the confidence of being loved 
um, and the God of the universe well pleased with me. And so I can go out with a, with a tremendous sense of freedom to simply uh, work as I love to work and give myself to it and not have my value and dignity and worth rise or fall on the successes or failures of that day. Let me just finish with this little um, quote and, a, and, a, and a, a quick little plug for a book that I've found very helpful for this. It's a very short little book. You can read it in about 20 minutes. It's called The Freedom of Self-Forgetfulness by Timothy Keller. Um, and he talks about this movement to this freedom that I'm, I'm, I've just described very, very briefly. And he has this wonderful quote I'll, I'll read. And I remember reading this for the first time and thinking, yes, I, I, I just would love that to be true of myself every, every day. Um, and this is, he's describing the person who no longer has their, their value and their worth tied up with what they do. He says, wouldn't you like to be the type of person who in their imaginary life does not sit around fantasizing about hitting self-esteem home runs, daydreaming about successes that give us the edge over others, but rather just to see the great work of others and to love the fact that it was done for it not to matter whether it was their success or my success, to love it the way you love a sunrise. And I remember reading that and just feeling that, you know, that's the kind of freedom that uh, I would love and have ex experienced in having my value and my identity and my worth, not caught up with my achievements or accomplishments in my work, but, uh, but given to me by uh, the God who I believe made me. So uh, I hope that's something that uh, is helpful for you as you think this through and perhaps that you can, or if you don't already, uh, perhaps know something of that freedom as well too.